Okay. Um, but last year I gave a preview of this uh, idea at the time and I said I would not present on this topic again until it was in production. I have to admit to you I missed my promise by five days. It is going in production next Monday. Um, so the other thing you will notice is that the title um, of the presentation here is slightly different from what I have in the program. This is an artifact of me going to Australia for vacation for four and a half weeks and on the way out telling my clinical informatics fellow to put together the presentation for HL7. Of course, he made up his own ideas of what the title should be. Um, a few weeks ago, but three weeks ago, uh, this application I will show you took first place in the inaugural AMIA Pitch It competition. Um, so this was a health IT innovation competition, 27 entries um, at the American Medical Informatics Association Fall Symposium. I'm only telling you that because I really don't mind if you vote for it again today. So, um. so the next slide shows you the participating organizations um, in this. So they are the Reagan Street Institute, which is my home organization. IU Health, the uh, largest health system in Indiana with 20 hospitals, and IHI, the Indiana Health Information Exchange, which maintains the and develops the production instance of the Indiana Network for Patient Care, which is the country's, the country's largest and oldest health information exchange. Those of you who've done projects like this, you know just from this slide that there went 75% of my project time. It took me one and a half years to get the three organization on the same page to say, yes, we're going to do this. And so that happened in April of this year, and we're now looking at a uh, end of or middle of December rollout. Uh, and uh, so uh, it was really the 80-20 rule in terms of bringing people together. So what is the fundamental problem uh, we're addressing? Um, as you, you heard, um, probably between the lines, with the country's largest health information exchange comes a blessing and a curse. You have a lot of information that you can offer to physicians. Um, and of course, in theory, many of them think much of that information is relevant to what they do. But practically speaking, if you have an HIE of any appreciable coverage and size, you're asking physicians and other clinicians to drink from a fire hose. Because the reaction is, well, it's great that you have so much information, but I don't really have the time or the energy to root around until I find what's relevant to my problem at this time um, with this patient. So in terms of coverage, um, the INPC, the Indiana Network for Patient Care, uh, covers approximately 68% of all patients in Indiana. Uh, actually, all people in Indiana, um, sorry. And many of those, because of the large participation in the INPC, have actually significant information uh, present. So we have uh, over 100 hospitals in the INPC. We have clinics, uh, medical practices, labs, thousands of physicians. Um, so you kind of appreciate how much information there really is um, and that that is a, a problem operationally for um, for the clinicians. So how do you efficiently review information in both your native health record as well as health information exchanges? So our use case is chest pain. So picture yourself as an ED physician, Monday morning, it's eight o'clock, and in comes the first patient with chest pain. Looks somewhat like the gentleman in the picture, and you kind of have this sense of either comfort or foreboding doom. Because whether that person, it is a life and death um, matter, what the sequence of decisions now is in the next few hours. The patient could have angina, <coughs> the patient could have an aneurysm, a uh, bona fide myocardial infarction, or indigestion. 
your clinical management strategy for these scenarios will be vastly different. So you don't want to make a mistake, but you also don't want to consume resources unnecessarily. You don't want to admit somebody who really does suffer from, from indigestion. So what do you do? Um, you obviously ask the patient, and then you think about, well, what information could I, um, could I retrieve to, um, to help me make that decision? So first you go into Cerna, and you look for a few key things. So you look for a, a previous uh, EKG, if there is one, because that's useful to compare to the EKG you just got from the nurse. You look for a cath cardiac catheterization report, because that'll give you a lot of clues. Uh, an echo would be good if it exists. A uh, cardiology note, so if the patient has seen a cardiologist one or more times in the past, also very useful. And lastly, you might be interested in a hospital discharge summary, specifically if it relates to the condition you're currently treating. Since you are an expert user in your home EHR, this is fairly easy. You know, you know the clicks. You can actually do this in your sleep, especially in, in, in an ED such as the one where we are deploying this. It's the Methodist ED in Indianapolis, one of the two busiest EDs in the city. 100,000 patient visits a year. 8,000 of those are chest pain related, so you're going to go, get to go through that sequence a lot. But that's not all. Now you've done this, and now you wonder, well, is there anything from another hospital um, in the INPC? So now you get to do it again. And of course, you have to go to a different application. Um, you do not have to log in separately. That's a pass-through login. You do not have to look for the patient in the INPC. That's done for you. You don't have to reconcile records. So that's all good. But to the three minutes or the two minutes you spent in Cerner here, you're now adding between three and five minutes to do the same thing in CareRib, which is the portal that gives you access to the HIE information. So that is the basic problem we're facing. We, uh, we have information, but you don't have easy access. And here are some of the consequences that happen when you don't have this information you are under time pressure, you're going to order some of the same tests that might be right there, right in front of your nose, but they're so far away. So how do we get from here to there, where we translate a deluge into a manageable stream? Now you get the pun. You know, when I came from vacation, I'm like, fire hydrant? What's that? That's another lame fire pun. But it actually does make sense. Um, so I have to give credit to the the fellow who did this. So let me show you uh, um, what we've uh, implemented. So I don't know how many Cerner users are in the room. I don't know how many ED physicians uh, are in the room who use Cerner. This is your standard um, board, uh, your tracking board for the ED that we have in Cerner. Uh, we have a patient here with chest pain. When you access the information about that patient in Cerna, typically what you'll do is you'll get to that patient summary screen, which is essentially a prepackaged uh, set of information that gives you a general idea of the patients. Our physicians use that a lot. It's very uh, useful. But when you look at this, you see it's not specific. You know, it's the same for every single patient. But it does give you uh, an idea of comorbidities and other things that you might want to know about. When you enter the full record for the patient, you get into the uh, uh, power chart that you've actually seen a few times today. Um, and I was, uh, I was uh, pleasantly surprised at our design decision to put the app on the, uh, in the uh, menu bar on the left-hand side it was very consistent with many of the other things we've seen today. So now, as a physician, I've clicked on the chest pain app now I'm actually looking at information from the HIE. And this is not magic, this is actually what happens. There was no login. There was no um, me identifying the patient again for the HIE. This is simply a transparent, a transparent pass through from Cerner um, to the uh, fire server. And I'll show you the architecture diagram in a little while. 
So what I see here now is the five items that we talked about already that are relevant to chest pain. Uh, I see whether there are any available at all. If so, when they were recorded. And third, what hospital um, they, uh, they were from. Um, very important when you show physicians information from elsewhere is that uh, they, they get this meta information. So I can click through here and essentially I'm just retrieving with very standard fire calls um, uh, information um, from the uh, HIE and can now integrate that into my management strategy. Um, and that's really the, uh, the app. Um, so simple principle, um, but bears impact on interoperability. Um, and so in Indiana, we're kind of throwing the first stone into the pond to create some waves in terms of making it easier for physicians to get at the information that they need on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you see a little bit of the general system architecture here. I'm sure most of you uh, in the room could draw this diagram now. It's, it's a very standard way of setting up um, fire servers um, in uh, between uh, a, uh, an EHR system and a, uh, a health information exchange. Uh, I have to admit the implementation of uh, OAuth 2, which is on this diagram, which would make it a true smart on fire app. Um, we actually haven't done that yet, but it doesn't matter. We're simply using a single sign-on authentication uh, that uh, we already had available. The clinicians don't know the difference and neither do they care. So where to from here? Uh, Monday is going to be a big day. Um, we're going to roll this out in the soft rollout. Um, we're going to gather some usage and performance data, doing some optimizations, and then I'm hoping that by about the end of January, we'll offer it to all emergency physicians, so that's 60 people um, in the Methodist ED. So that's 100,000 visits. Uh, as I said before, 8,000 of those are chest pain related. And so now let's do a little mind game. So we have 8,000 uh, visits. Let's say we save somewhere between five and eight minutes for each visit um, through the, uh, for the 60 physicians. You're actually talking about numbers that matter to hospital administrators. Um, once we have this application out, um, we will we're planning to roll this out for other chief complaints. You saw that the chief complaint was hard-coded uh, on the screen because we're only doing one at the moment, but we already have abdominal pain, pregnant patient, uh, mental, confused patient. You know, the, the, the range of things you could do is essentially infinite. Um, once it gets beyond a specified uh, number of entries on the drop-down menu that we'll have at that point, uh, we'll have to rethink our interface a little bit. And at large, one of the things we have to really think about is how do you, how do you effectively integrate HIE-derived information into an EHR at scale? Because we can populate a huge number of places in Cerner, uh, theoretically, with information from the HIE. But as you may imagine, it'll, it'll have usability uh, consequences. Um, it'll have interoperability consequences consequences and so on. So with that, let me uh, thank the team. This might look large, um, but I can tell you all these people are actually working on this. This includes clinical informatics fellows, emergency physicians, uh, computer science students, programmers, there's an intern, um, there are operational people from uh, IT at IU Health, um, and there are top level executives on that list. So. Um, it is really kind of a, uh, a big lift, but now the whole team can taste this, the success, and that's what I'm hoping I can report to you at some future point again. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, really enjoyed it.